there's always one football family there can never be two we will disagree on issues we will disagree on how you think i must wear my dress but let's think ghana football first Ghana football has seen a major transformation within the last 12 months with a number of policies, interventions and key decisions taken by the Executive Council led by President Ket Edwin Simeon Okraku to change the course of the industry. For the first time, we have a properly set up technical directorate. This is the first time. We went through successfully to appoint a referees manager for our FA and we also appointed an integrity officer for our football association. The current executive council really thinks football across every village, every town within Ghana. This is our own. Let's cherish our own. For the first time in three and a half years, the Ghana Football Association completed a competitive Premier League season featuring 18 clubs. And after a keenly contested campaign, a crowd's evoke pick their arch rivals Asante Kotoko to the league title. There you go. The Fabians are champions of the Ghana Premier League. They have their Premier League title. In the second tier competition, Rao Tamale United, BBNE Gold Stars and Accra Lions qualified for the elite division after a stellar campaign in their respective zones. Rao Tamale United won the ticket on the final day of the competition following a home win that gave them an edge over Bofuakwa Tunnel. Bibiani Gold Stars outweighted Sky FC to the slot in Zone 2, while Accra Lions beat Tema Youth in a close shave in Zone 3. <laughs> In women's football, Hazakes ladies won the double after beating Ampem Dakuan ladies in the Premier League and FA Cup. So far, this is the year that I've seen that women's football is really, really, really going on. Looking at our league for this year, uh, seriously, it has really improved. For all the teams, we would have to congratulate them. You go onto social media and each and every team have a social media page. And it has now improved to the stage where the players are also branding themselves on social media. One brilliant policy that is dear to the hearts of the football hierarchy is the catch them young refereeing policy. The policy was introduced to expose potential referees at a young age to imbibe the needed values in referees at an early stage and train them to attain the highest level in refereeing. This policy is open also to girls between the ages of 13 and 16. And these kids would officiate in all juvenile games across the length and breadth of Ghana. Still on refereeing. The Ghana Football Association has taken delivery of 10 electronic two-sided substitution boards. The Ghana Football Association has heavily invested in the training of elite referees, both male and female. The Ghana Football Association has also taken the issue of integrity seriously. Integrity and Compliance Manager Obed Tufo has embarked on several awareness campaigns to sensitize the public, players, referees, coaches, stakeholders, direct and indirect consumers of the product about the dangers in betting and other unscrupulous acts that bring the game into disrepute. We all have to protect the integrity of a beautiful game. This is something that I will want to urge the FA that um, it shouldn't be only a yearly program. If it can be done um, halfway through every season, 
so that the, everybody that is involved will get to know the do's and the don'ts of it. As part of our grand agenda to reposition the Ghana football brand and restore public confidence, the GFA has embarked on a massive drive to expose products across the length and breadth of the country. These include special stadium branding during national team matches, top Premier League fixtures, women's Premier League final, the MTN FA Cup and the women's FA Cup. Special attention has also been given to internal communication at the Secretariat to communicate to visitors and patrons of football. A vibrant communication team has been established by the administration to drive forward product visibility, projections, brand positioning and quality marketing of the various products of the GFA. These include live streaming of Division 1 League and Women's Premier League matches. The Communications Department has also introduced special programs to make the FA products fully accessible and available to the public. They include the Division 1 League Highlight Show, the Premier League Highlight Show, GFA News, live streaming of GFA programs, among others. Population of content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube have been immense to put the spotlight on events, activities and programs of the Ghana Football Association. Another area of significance is club licensing. The club licensing board, chaired by Dr. Kwame Banuako and manager Julius Ben Emuna, have been very vigorous in their dealings with strict adherence of the licensing regulations. The new regulations and compliance regimes seek to improve the overall quality of the Ghanaian game. The licensing regulation covers finance, administration, technical, communication, marketing and infrastructure. Over the period, training programs have been held for Premier, Division 1 and Women's Premier League clubs having in mind the aforementioned requirements. The licensing board implements the standards. We, want, we check to make sure that the standards which have been approved by the football clubs themselves are kept for the benefit of the whole team. So we are meant to uphold standards and we'll try and make sure that Ghana football improves for the benefit of all the stakeholders. The senior national team in March this year qualified for a record ninth straight Africa Cup of Nations tournament after drawing with South Africa in Johannesburg. The team rounded up the qualifiers with a 3-1 win against Sao Tome and Principe in Accra. Ghana currently sits second in Group G in the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 qualifiers that are still ongoing. The Black Stars have two wins away from winning the single slot in the group to qualify to the next round of the qualifiers. Ghana's male under 20 team, the Black Satellites, beat Uganda 2-0 to win the 2021 Africa Under 20 Cup of Nations in Mauritania. The team also won the 2020 Wafu Championship in Benin after beating Burkina Faso in the final. It's a big, 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 big gift you gave to Ghana. And you arrived here on the day of the state opening of parliament by the president. I've just come from delivering the state of the message on the state of the nation. So it's only big events that move you. I can see that. Wow. The Black Queens engaged Morocco in two international friendly matches in Accra in December. This was part of the plan to prepare the team for the 2022 Africa Women's Championship qualifier. The Queens also played in the Aisha Buhari Cup in Nigeria, where Ghana lost to South Africa and won against Cameroon in the group stages. The IT department of the GFA led by Francis Edu, is one of the leading setups across the West African sub-region. They offer training programs for neighboring countries such as Liberia, The Gambia, Togo, Benin, Sierra Leone, 
among others. In Ghana, the IT department trains clubs, referees and match commissioners in areas such as the Domestic Transfer Matching System DTMS, Player Registration, Competition Management System CMS, and the issuance of the International Transfer Certificate ITC. We have learned a lot from the Domestic Transfer Matching System. Initially it was um, the International Transfer Matching System and now they've made it such that locally we can transfer player from one team to another team. In stakeholder engagement, the Ghana Football Association in partnership with the Sports Writers Association of Ghana, SWAG, held the first ever media capacity building on Tuesday, March 16, 2021 in Accra. The aim of the program was to ensure that the sports media understands the workings of the FA and to build on the existing relationship between the two entities. There was another program for the Northern Sector in Kumasi. Members of the ever hard-working executive of the Sports Writers Association of Ghana, I welcome all of you to experience the FA's new way of working in transparency and ensuring that there is constant information flow not only to all our stakeholders but our proud members of the media. Technical Directorate For the first time in five years, the Ghana Football Association has successfully organized a refresher course for CAF License A certificate holders due to the hard work of the Technical Directorate. Beginners courses are also ongoing across the 10 regions for license D trainers. The GFA also plans to organize refresher courses for license B and C in the coming days. The Directorate also organized a mid-season coaching seminar for Premier League and national team coaches in March this year, where top German coach and UEFA coaching instructor Eric Rutmola was the facilitator. One remarkable achievement of the Directorate is their ability to put together a comprehensive document on Ghana's football DNA, which will soon be launched. Today, we have converted the property that used to house our national team coaches to be the hub of our Tenka Directorate. This tells you the commitment of the FA to rigorously pursue our developmental agenda. Projects. Having recognized that need, we looked for people or partners who would help us solve our, our, our problems. And one of such was the uh, UEFA assist. Now, how do we assess that? We went through CAF with a big support from CAF. Uh, we did application for the UEFA assist for a van and um, through the hard work of the secretariat, we now have this amazing van. The Ghana Football Association in August 2020 made an allocation of $290,000 to purchase computers, scanners, printers, IT systems, internet connectivity materials via the FIFA Forward 1.0 program. Uh, they promised and they delivered and this is going to enhance our work at our office. As a result, the GFA provided the 18 Premier League clubs, 48 Division 1 League clubs and 16 Women's Premier League clubs as well as the 10 RFEs and the GFA head office in Accra with a state-of-the-art IT equipment to help members to effectively communicate among themselves and to ensure that registration of players is decentralized. It formed part of the FIFA Forward 1.0 program. The Forward 1.0 program also included the construction of two astroturfs, one at Pram Pram and the other at Bogatanga in the Upper East region of Ghana. These two are yet to be done. The Federation also announced the decision to invest $280,000 into a strategy to improve competitions via the provision of boreholes at game centers across the country. The borehole project took off at the Ghanaman Center of Excellence at Pram Pram 
before moving to Brekum Golden City Park, Sunyane Coronation Park, and the Nana Ajiman Bedu, the first park at Doma. Over 80 centers will benefit from the borehole project. GFA has had this uh, very fantastic project of uh, building uh, 80 boreholes uh, countrywide in the entire country in each regional football association in order to assist the clubs uh, to have a decent uh, field. The GFA also acquired 6,000 footballs to support grassroots football development. <laughs> Return of juvenile football. So after a long wait, the juvenile football makes a strong return today to the FA's portfolio of football products. Indeed, many of you have yearned for juvenile football to come back. And today, we are here to witness the rebirth of our cherished sport. The Ghana Football Association on Wednesday, April 28, 2021, launched the juvenile football season at the headquarters in Accra. And the competition took off across the country in May this year. This was the rebirth of juvenile football, which had been in abeyance for almost six years. At long last, we have gotten back to what we used to admire. We will see great, great players from, from, from this tournament. And now to our next story, and there's good news for the Ghana Football Association and juvenile football in the country, as the body has partnered the KGL Foundation the corporate organization signed to sponsor grassroots football in Ghana with an amount of $1 million for the next five years. KGF Foundation obviously gives hope to the hopeless, gives opportunities, improves the capacity of, of young people, and in this instant case, have offered an amazing opportunity to give hope to our younger brothers who would aspire to be big footballers in future. The aim of the GFA was to use the season to identify budding talents to mark the start of a long-term development project that would benefit the various national teams. That's how come some of us, we had the opportunity to uh, have the call-up to the national under-15. That's what put us in the highest of Ghanaian. YEA support. Through the leadership of the Ghana Football Association, 500 female footballists attached to the various women's Premier League clubs benefited monthly stipends from the Youth Employment Agency where each registered player from each club received 500 CDs for six months. I must say it was very refreshing and welcoming when um, the GFA president, Mr. Kreku, came to see the agency that they needed support uh, for various football activities in the country. In fact, I must commend him and the GFA for bringing such a worthy proposal to the agency for us to look into it. So in a nutshell, we are here this morning to sign an agreement between the two state institutions, that is the Youth Employment Agency and National Sports Authority, whereby YEA is going to provide financial assistance in the form of allowance uh, to our various sportsmen and women in this country for the period of six months afterwards that we will review to see the impact. The program was extended for six more months after the initial six-month period and it is currently under review. Ministry of Youth and Sports The GFA in December 2020 received an amount of 1 million Ghana cities from the Government of Ghana through the Ministry of Youth and Sports for onward distribution to Premier League clubs as part of their support mechanism to the clubs to offset some of their expenses in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic. The GFA later in April received a check of 470,000 Ghana cities for disbursement to Division 1 League clubs. I think that it has come in time We've been working on this for so long. Uh, we've had numerous meetings, uh, and finally, His Excellency has spoken. Uh, I think this will go a long way in cushioning our Premier League clubs, especially during this challenging period of COVID. 
FIFA COVID-19 Relief Fund. The GFA received an amount of $1 million from FIFA as COVID-19 Relief Fund. The money was paid in two tranches, the first one in July 2020 and the second tranche in January 2021. FIFA also set aside $500,000 purposely for women's football. We have had the opportunity to visit some clubs uh, and uh, we can see the way uh, professionalism is implemented in the management of clubs. Hazakas ladies. Hazakas ladies lifted the maiden edition of the Wafu Club Championship after beating Rivers Angels from Nigeria in the final. The second D-based side got the nod to represent Ghana, having won the NC Special Competition two seasons ago. The two ladies won the treble for the first time in the club's history after lifting two domestic titles and the Wafu Zone B Cup of Nations. Azarkas ladies will represent Ghana at the maiden edition of the Africa Club Champions League in Egypt. <laughs> Kumasi Asante Kotoko represented Ghana in the CAF Champions League but crashed out of the Continental Showpiece after losing to Al Hilal of Sudan. In the Confederation Cup, Obuasi Ashanti Gold were also eliminated by Salitas from Burkina Faso. General Secretary of the GFA Prosper Harrison Addo, Vice President Mark Addo and President of the FA Ket Edwin Simeon Okraku took part in two congress from CAF and one at FIFA. All these programs were held via Zoom. Administratively, the Ghana Football Association has acquired the Sage Software, a world acclaimed accounting software for its operations. And currently, the accounts department is using the software without trouble. The GFA has also appointed a human resource manager to streamline staff welfare and other employee needs. Aside that, the GFA has successfully completed the mandatory FIFA auditing and the domestic auditing from local auditors Bikatili and Underfair. The GFA will continue to serve our stakeholders in the belief that the future will definitely shine and the stars will shine again. <laughs>